How's it going guys? Uh, I thought I would go live. I did give like a, <laughs> a 10 minute warning, which people asked me for and I finally remembered to give that 10 minute warning. <laughs> so I know 10 minutes isn't that much of a warning, but I feel like it's still better than what was previous. Hi Lauren Higby, how's it going? How are you doing tonight, Thursday night? How is everybody? Let me know where you're from. I'm just here with Diane. <laughs> She's getting her two hand pets, her signature need. <laughs> My little girl. How are you guys doing though? Oh nice, glad to hear. <laughs> Chicago, nice. Diane says hi. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually out earlier. Okay, <laughs> I'll start talking about what I thought to go live about. Um, I always do that. I feel like I'll watch like the first five minutes sometimes of the ones that already happened, and I'm like, wow, it took me forever to get what I was to what I was saying. I guess you can click through it. Um, but wow, Chicago, nice. Oh, I'm jealous you're in Chicago. There was that giant Bernina sewing machine there. Um, yeah. I don't know. I saw that Susie Quilts had taken a picture with it, and it looked fun. So, I wish I was in Chicago. <laughs> I'm going to put her down for a second. Um, oh, Las Vegas! Nice! Oh my gosh, I want to go to Las Vegas. I see the there's some quilt shop I follow that's located in Las Vegas. They have, like, a fun row-by-row row coming up. Oh, what was it? Quiltique! Uh, there's, like, an Elvis row-by-row. Row. So, I wish I could go to Las Vegas um, and pick up the the Elvis pattern. Yeah, um, but yeah, how are you guys doing today? Uh, you made it. Oh, Oregon, nice, serial quilter. Oh, Brazil, that's awesome. I'm in New York, uh, if you guys didn't know. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, how are you guys doing? Hey, Val. <laughs> how are you? I like the wave thing. It kind of lets you know who's here. I'm just here with Diane, if you guys are just joining us. <laughs> We had a busy day, she got her pets, you know. I did some sewing, some pattern drafting. <laughs> oh, you love NY NYC? Nice! Yeah, I mean, I love New York, that's where I am. I've been here about 10 years. The one downside that I'm encountering now, funny about living in New York for 10 years, is that I never got my driver's license because I didn't need it. And now I'm getting uh, quilt guild requests to like, you know, uh, do stuff at guilds uh, across the country and I don't drive and that's not very handy um, it only works out when it's in a big city I guess <laughs> I don't know just side note oh Diane's cute thank you you know I love my Diane <laughs> my baby um, oh let's see what happened today a quilty box arrived in the mail which is exciting because that means I get to do another giveaway Oop, showed you my address <laughs> um, oh you used to live there nice <laughs> How are you guys doing? If you're just joining, let me know where you're from. That's always fun. Again, I know I said it, I'm in here. Honey! See, I picked up the quilty box and <laughs> she got jealous. Um, but how are you guys doing tonight? Uh, I got a quilty box in the mail today, which means, it actually means like some work for me. I have to make a video uh, for the giveaway post. Not that that's work, that's always fun. Uh... <laughs> oh, she's like, oh no, you will not be picking up this quilty box. <laughs> You'll be picking up me. Uh, <laughs> yep, pick me. <laughs> oh, piggy for the winner? So I haven't posted the giveaway yet, but I should do it... I don't know. Probably not tomorrow. Maybe this weekend or Monday, probably. <laughs> oh, from Rochester, New York. I used to go through Rochester. Uh, I'd gone to college for two years upstate uh, to Alfred. And so I would ride through it uh, in my commute, you know, back down to Orange County. <laughs> nice. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm just here with Diane in New York. Whew. I'm actually going to turn my AC up. One second. It is really warm in here. Oh my goodness. I do have several lights on. So that's probably the case. Um, when I go live, I feel like it's better when there's lights on. <laughs> But I think it makes my apartment a little warmer. You know, anyway. Uh, oh, I went to the store earlier. So I was uh, in New Jersey for a bit. 
and I stopped at Joanne's actually, and I picked up a bunch of different heat and bonds. So like a classic one, cause I didn't have a roll this wide. Um, so I have a quilt that I need to do the binding on, but I don't have time cause I'm writing my book and I'm like insanely busy. So I, you know, it's a secret. Shh. One of my quilts is gonna be bound with heat and bond until I have time to actually hand sew it. Cause I refuse to machine sew. Um, I just love the look of hand binding. So unfortunately, it's kind of like cheating, I feel like, when I hold up a quilt and I'll know. So I haven't done it in any other ones. They're just pinned um, and you can tell. Uh, but this one, fortunately, I'm gonna have to heat and bond the binding down. I feel like I should feel bad about that, but I'm admitting it here, you know. Um, oh, thanks, you have my quilting space. Uh, is it clean? It's cleanish. So this is my box, my original scrap box, work box 3.0. That's a mouthful. <laughs> As I have my arm in front of the camera. Uh, what's the name of the furniture? Oh, see, I'm, I didn't see that when I had said that before, but you know, anywho. So this is my scrap box. So that's the name. I wonder if you probably can't see it. Did I name it yet? No, I did not name it because I'm having trouble picking a name. Um, there's just everyone, you know, every time I ask for suggestions on Instagram, everyone gives me so many good options, whether it's like between two things, there's always like such good arguments as to why I should choose one or the other, or if it's like a name or something, there's usually really good ones. It's like crowdsourcing, you know, fun stuff. Uh, you know, everyone, I don't know. That's how I look at it gets to join, but then there's just such good options that I'm just kind of like where I started with my indecisiveness. Uh, but I will pick a name soon, you know. <laughs> Amazing space. Oh, thank you. Uh, if you're just joining us, let me know where you're from. How are you doing? If you have any questions about it. Oh, up there, that's the Sizzix box. I was holding onto the box because I thought I would make a video talking about like my experience with it starting out new, but I think I might have to toss it, you know. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I was saying, I, oh, I had never seen this before. So this is like a new peel and or not new, new to me. Um, or I probably saw it and up until of late, you know, I don't, I hold back on things that I'm not in a store to purchase. Um, one thing I find with the subscription boxes is uh, that they send me notions that I probably wouldn't have purchased myself, but then I learn about them through, you know, because they were sent in the box. So I just kind of given them and, you know, it, but it makes me experiment more with stuff because it's stuff that I might not, hi honey, I know, <laughs> Diane, um, she's like, why are you holding up? What are you holding that up for? And why is it not me? I'm sorry, sweetie. So yeah, I told you I got this for my binding cheating temporarily. I will hand sew it eventually. Uh, and this, but anyway, I didn't talk about it. <laughs> it's a new peel and stick. Uh, I keep saying new, excuse me, new to me. Um, but I guess it's sticky on both sides and you can press it, which is like super cool. I don't know, has anyone used this before? Massachusetts, nice. <laughs> yeah, let me know where you guys are from. That's cool. I do say that a lot, but I think it's always awesome when I find out like someone's from someplace I've been before, someplace I know of, or, you know, I know someone from, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's part of the thing, one of the things I like about the Instagram live. Um, near Cleveland, Ohio, sweet. That's so cool. I'm trying to think, I've been through Ohio before, but I don't think I've like been there, you know, too long. I'm gonna put that on the fabric fuse. <laughs> so I also bought a Beanie Baby. I'm proud to admit I'm a 31 year old man. And when I'm in a craft store, there's usually a Beanie Baby display. And I thought this one was really cute and I just went for it, you know. Um, I might give it to my niece. That's what I'm saying. But we'll see if I can, you know, let go of it. What else? So I told you, oh, if you're just joining us, I'll be briefly say this again. And as I show the address, I don't know. I mean, you guys are quilters, right? <laughs> um, but the new quilting box arrived, which means I'm going to do a giveaway, which is fun. I love doing that every month. Um, yeah. So look out for this in the next few days. Uh, let's see. Uh, love... Oh, running spin California. Nice. I got a guild request today from California. Um, so I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do is because I can't go right now because I'm, you know, writing my book, but I'm going to try to plan out. I'm trying to show you the quilty box. Like I'm going to put it on a list and then 
So since I don't drive, it's kind of hard in places that aren't big cities, you know, because I can't like easily Uber and stuff between, because I mentioned earlier, I don't have my license because I've lived in New York since I've been legal driving age. And, you know, there's no need to have a car when you live in Manhattan. Uh, it's just like an expense, you know, that you use the subway. I mean, I don't even use the subway that much unless it's raining. I bike everywhere. Uh, I love the new city bike because it lets me do one-way biking. <laughs> okay. Uh, come to California. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, so if you guys are in any state you want me to come, suggest it to your local quilt shop. And then when I'm planning that portion of, like, my book um, promotional stuff next year, I guess I call it, then I can take that into account, you know. Anywho. Uh, what's CA Guild? So, I'd have to look at my phone because my laptop isn't on. And I'm on live. But, if you send me a message through, you know, Instagram and ask me that question, then I will get back to you. But I probably won't remember if you don't send me a, a message. So, Quilty Fox. Oh, my machine! So yeah, it was National Sewing Machine Day. When? Yesterday? I think so. Ooh, I should take my phone out of my folder. I can show you things up close. <laughs> Is there anything you guys want to see in the scrap box? Um, so let's see. Oh, I should probably flip it. So, wait. Doo -doo -doo. So that's me. <laughs> I'm sure this is a very flattering angle. <laughs> so here is the scrap box. I'm sorry if it's shaky, I'll try to be smooth. Um, if you guys are just joining us, let me know where you're from. Oh, that's a list of landmarks that are for New York. Um, something, oh, book stuff. So unfortunately, I can't show any book stuff anymore um, on Instagram, I've been told, because it's crazy to think with, that as many people as there are that professionals would already like, you know. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about that stuff. Anywho, um, I don't think there's anything I shouldn't show. Cause like, I'm the type of person who just show everyone everything, you know. Anywho. Oh, this little minion. I think it was a kid's meal toy that I had gotten, but I think he's cute. Um, so I'm being super dorky now. I have my minion and I did also purchase this uh, tonight. I think it's for my niece, we'll see. <laughs> Um, but yeah, do you guys have any questions about the quilty box? Let's see. Oh, from Barcelona. Very cool. I want to go to Barcelona. That would be so awesome. Hopefully one day. Um, let's see. I'm just scrolling down. Oh, PDX. Nice. Edmond. Oh, Alberta. Sweet. New Zealand. That's so cool. Everyone's from... Uh, that's horrible. They would steal your designs. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I can't even. It's unimaginable for me because this is all new to me. And I think of myself as just like, I don't know, a regular person. I don't think that I'm like special enough to, I don't know. It's flattering in some ways, upsetting in others. I don't know. I mean, you learn lessons, I guess. So it was a lesson I had to learn um, just because in publishing, I feel like ooh, this is kind of loud. Um, everything is so far in advance. Ooh, sorry for shakiness that, you know, it's just different. If I was releasing the pattern myself and it was pretty quick, I think it'd be fine, but... So these are my Liberty drawers. Okay, end of that. Oh, here's my camera. I got a couple messages asking me about my camera today. So this is my camera with the small lens. This is what I use to take my quilty pictures. Um, it's a Fujifilm. I like it. Um, so yeah. Sorry, I know cameras aren't very quilt related, but since I did cut a couple questions, I thought I would share quick. And then this is my big lens. Um, that's the hood. I don't really use the hood. I kind of like lens flares in my photos, uh, but this is my, you know, my zoom lens. <laughs> if I wasn't holding the camera, I'd show you. It goes out really far. Uh, but that's the ended like tech stuff. How did I decide where to put things? Uh, was there a suggestion sheet? So there wasn't a suggestion sheet. Um, it just kind of, I just started shoving stuff in and as I did it, I found that, so initially, so for example, there's lots of these drawers uh, or five inserts came like, see this? Hi honey. Aw, Diane wants attention. Um, but I'm gonna continue to show you this. Sorry, <laughs> no, don't climb on it. She's trying to climb on the, <laughs> oh yeah, any questions? Um, but yeah, so I'm showing you the box. Oh, this purple thing. I have to remember to take this to my next class. Um, I told someone I'd give it to them. 
So that was that was helpful. But yeah, so anyway, what I was saying, this is, see, I get very sidetracked very easily. Hi, Black Crazy, how's it going? Um, yeah, so in answering the question about deciding where to put things. So for example, these inserts that goes in these drawers, I initially put all five in, but I realized um, I needed the bigger drawers for my fabric because I had enough fabric to fill almost, apart from these two, which have rubber stamps in them. I really like that quote block rubber stamp. Um, or stamping stuff, like they have embossing powder, some of that stuff I've had since I was like 12 years old. Like that heat gun. <laughs> um, yeah, do you guys have any questions? I'm trying to think what's new in my world. So I did show my machine with Diane uh, for National Sewing Machine Day. That was my last post, I think. Um, yeah. I think what's new? Oh, I'm an Orphil artisan. That's fun. I do love my Orphil thread. Um, yeah. And my La Mer hand cream. So I really like two brands. Again, off topic. I love the La Mer hand cream. It's really fancy. A friend gave me that one. Uh, but then I also love L'Occitane products. I don't know if you guys, what you guys use. Uh, that's old LOL. Yeah, tw I was 12, so that was 19 years ago. And the heat gun still works. I use it for my embossing, but yeah. Lots of these, there's fabric in here that's that old. So here, I'm doing a tour of my scrap box. So as, as you can see, these are, I think these all are, yeah, these all are fabric. It's just kind of shoved in there. I feel like over time, it'll get neater. So like this whole box is Allison glass, um, I believe. Yeah, ooh, Mariner's cloth. I like Mariner's cloth. Oh, see, I'm messing it up. I just dropped some. Uh, sorry for the shaky camera. Um, I'll put it back in the tripod soon. I just wanted to show you guys like a uh, up close. Oh, my Tim Holtz fabric. So this is gonna become the backing for one of my quilts uh, in a book. He had sent me all this and then I felt so bad and I didn't use it for so long because I got extremely busy and I feel horrible. So that's gonna be in my book, um, but it's perfect because, oh, again, I'm forgetting. I shouldn't say too much. Um, I was scolded. <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny? Uh, Oh, my Hello Kitty. So this has its own drawer. But see, like, even these little drawers, I thought I was going to put notions and stuff in. And I didn't. Sorry, I know I'm not always doing good with the camera work. Um, I have a gimbal. I should put it in my gimbal. Um, but yeah, where are you guys from? Do you have any questions? This is my coveted Hello Kitty Liberty. So this is Liberty Lawn. Um, I wish I had more. There might be some pieces other places, but this is my favorite my favorite of Liberty Lawn. I think it's also the most expensive Liberty Lawn that I've ever purchased. Um, the Hello Kitty stuff. Like, I've ordered it from different Asian countries because I think it's only licensed to be sold there. Um, I could be wrong. But yeah. Hi, sweetie. Uh, okay. So I'm going to flip this around again quick. Boop. <laughs> Hang on, put this down. So yeah, if you're just joining us, how are, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm here with Diane. I'll show her in a second. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. She did not like at all that handheld camera stuff. She wanted me to hold her and she was upset the whole time. She was making a big fuss. So I do have to admit about Diane is she's very spoiled. She's a very spoiled little girl. So she knows what she wants. And I thought she was actually, I, I stopped with the handheld because I thought she was gonna like bark. <laughs> I mean, that's fine, but... Oh, you love Hello Kitty Liberty. Nice! Yeah, I love it myself. Um, I don't know. I guess it's kind of embarrassing, but I'm one of those people who just goes for it. <laughs> but yeah, how are you guys doing tonight? It's Thursday. I'm in New York City. Uh, what's new? Told you about the heat and bomb products I bought. Oh, I don't know if I showed this. I think I did, but I have to sew this shut. This is a lavender sachet I made. Thought it was cute. So whenever the phone is in the, the holder and it shakes, that's because Diana's shaking it. <laughs> I did just put her down. Um, okay, honey, <laughs> you're happy. <laughs> She's back by, by her demand, I guess. Are you sweetie? How are you guys doing today? Um, what else did I have to tell you? I'm trying to think. So I can show you some of what I'm sewing, I guess. Diane's a sweet girl. Does she watch you sewing? Oh yeah. So she, when I'm sewing, it's really like a battle 
uh, with Diane because she wants attention. She wants hugs and kisses and two hand pets. Um, so, yeah. I'm gonna get a drink real quick. It's over here. All right. <laughs> but yeah, ask me questions if you have any. If that, I think that's fun when I get asked questions because I don't really know, you know, what to say in these live things, but I enjoy doing them because it's cool. Like, it's like another way to interact with people on Instagram. Uh, am I going to work on something? Ooh, that's a good suggestion. So maybe I'll do Instagrams where I demonstrate stuff, like on lives. I've been saying forever that I'm gonna make tutorials and stuff. Ah, honey. So see, I just drank cranberry juice. That wasn't a kiss out of being a sweetheart. That was a kiss of, ooh, that smells good. I'd like to smell that cranberry juice, please. <laughs> uh, do I ever sew garments? So I've helped people in lessons sew garments and I've sewn basic things like sleep pants and shirts. Not like a men's college shirt yet. One day maybe. Um, in the time that I decided to do it, then I got really busy. I actually bought a men's shirt pattern. I was gonna try, but then now I'm writing my patterns uh, for my book and that's due now in the beginning of August. <laughs> so it's all we can work on at the moment. Woo. So yeah, how are you guys doing? Did I sew anything for Diane? Ooh, so that's another good question. I should write these down. I'll get the, where is it? I'll get this stuff out. So the next time I go live, I will show, you know, what Diane, the stuff I've sewn for Diane. <laughs> I don't think I ever have now that you said it. I remember the last live I showed for the first time, um, my first quilt that I've sewn. So there's pins in this. So honey, don't get, don't get too close. This is the first quilt um, when I was, I guess 12, 13-ish? I know it must be 12. Um, it's not finished. My grandmother told me, um, basically just explain that there, ooh, she's shaking, she's scratching. So it shakes the, the phone, sorry. <laughs> um, when will my book be released? Um, so, ooh, it's going on Amazon soon, which is funny because I haven't written it yet. But, so you'll be able to pre-order it at some point in the very near future. Um, like I've only written some of it. But it actually comes out in March of next year. Uh, yeah, so good ways, it's due to my publisher in the beginning of August and then it'll be released in March. But funny enough that it'll be up for pre-order like way before that. Um, yeah. <laughs> How wide do I cut my binding? Good question, a sewing question. So I cut my binding two and a quarter inches uh, thick. That is one of the things um, I was really excited about about the Sizzix in my mind was that I was going to use the two inch or the two and a half inch strips to cut the binding. And then I remembered that my favorite binding was two and a quarter. Um, and they don't have a die that's two and a quarter. So I don't know if I'm fancy enough to request that they make a two and a quarter inch die for me to cut my binding. Um, I don't think I am. <laughs> but I hope that there's a possibility. Did I get, did I make the chickens? Oh yeah, I made these chickens. I did not get these anywhere. Um, there'll be a pattern coming out for them after August, so after my book's up. So initially I was gonna put the, the pattern in the book, but my book has a theme that didn't really match with it. Um, yeah. So um, someone had suggested that I make a Patreon and that I can say things in the Patreon because it would be people who would be genuinely interested, like, you know, just not like Instagram um, stuff that I could say, like, stuff about my book too, that it wouldn't be as big of a deal as saying it here. I don't know if that's a thing. Um, but yeah, so that may be an option. We'll see. Um, I also think I might do this on YouTube instead because you can save the YouTubes or it's easier at least. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do you, do you guys like these lives? I feel like I tend to ramble on a bit and I lose track of what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm a big rambler too. So maybe I'll try to have topics on Instagram live. Um, did I make the chickens? Yes, that's what I was talking about. See, I got distracted. Um, and yeah, so there'll be a pattern coming out later this year for the chickens. Is she shaking this? So I usually put a 
cutting that underneath this little phone holder to stabilize it, but I didn't. So sorry if it's shaky. Um, if you're just joining us, let me know where you're from. Um, that's always cool. I like to hear where you guys are from. Um, and yeah, I'll show you my scrap box. So this is my gal. Um, ooh, I'll show you the box. Cause I don't want to drag out the big shot right now, but I just got one of these. So this is super cool. I saw these are only like a hundred and thirty dollars on Amazon, which is super inexpensive. I paid four hundred dollars for my Cricut, um, you know, die cutting versus electronic. But I didn't realize these were so inexpensive when I had um, purchased the Cricut. I didn't really, in my mind, I wanted electronic uh, one. But like a good example, like cutting binding. You can cut eight layers at once with these. Um, and I think that's super handy. Or things like half square triangles of a certain size. Um, so I think that like I, I just should have gotten both initially. Um, oh, from Australia, nice. From Puerto Rico. Uh, my grandma was actually born in Puerto Rico. Her first language was Spanish. I don't know, fun fact. Um, so I guess my mom is half Puerto Rican and I'm a quarter Puerto Rican. <laughs> uh, how are you doing in Puerto Rico? That's so cool. Um, yeah. But Australia, oh my gosh. So, oh, Ava and Neve, that's the, the Australian Liberty store um, that I get Liberty from sometimes. Like, it's funny when I shop for Liberty, I'm usually shopping between a couple stores because none of them all have like a print that I want. So, I try to like to hit free shipping in all of them when I need stuff and so I'll figure out which store I hit free shipping at on the things that just they have that I need um, that's how I shop for my Liberty basically so like 60 here 100 there um, but it's funny they all don't have the same Liberty and so I'm usually you know trying to get everything from between them all um, but even and need that's the or I don't know what I'm saying that right that's the one in Australia Alice Caroline is the one in the UK they're super awesome. I love Alice Caroline. Um, in the US, there's like Duckadilly, there's pink castle fabrics, I want to say. I'm trying to think who else? Fabric.com. Um, I do try to shop small for the most part, unless I absolutely can't get something at like a smaller, small business. Um, but I will do that. So that's why I don't say that one because I think it's I'm always like support your LQS You know, I work uh, I teach at a local quilt shop and I love it so much and I know like online is kind of causing Local quilt shops to close and so it makes me really sad. I really there's something about uh, Touching and feeling like at Gotham quilts um, the fabrics and seeing them in person uh, when you want to buy them. So that's my spiel on supporting your local quilt shop. Uh, I always highly recommend that. The Cutting Cloth in Melbourne stocks Liberty. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Yes, if you have Liberty suggestions for me of suppliers, definitely um, send me a message maybe. But I'll try to remember the Cutting Cloth. Cutting Cloth. Did I say that right? I think I did. Um, yeah. Oh, I want to show you this. Again, techie things because I'm super dorky. But I got this little camera that records smart clips. Um, I bought it myself. <laughs> it was like 200-ish dollars, but I leave it on Diane when I'm not home. So prepare to see behind the scenes footage of Diane, doggy Diane, snoozing when I'm not home, you know. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, I don't know, uh, like questions about the workbox or anything. If not, I'll head out, but I'm trying to think what else there was to talk about. I could easily ramble on and on, but I know that it gets boring. Let's see. Here's Diane. <laughs> uh, when are you going to a quilt? Um, where do I get my inspiration? Really from everywhere. It could be that I see a piece of fabric I like, um, or a group of fabrics that I put together. Oh, honey. Um, I could see something on the street, like a building, or, you know, I'm inspired by, ooh, I shouldn't say a lot of things yet, because they relate to my book. So I, what I'm inspired about at the moment is book related, but I love rainbows. I don't know, I'm sure you guys see, like, um, uh, I do a lot of Liberty rainbows. Um, I really love, love, love Liberty, and 
I'm trying to make whole Liberty quilts right now. Um, because I really love the softness of it. Excuse me. Um, it's just the feeling of it. So when you do the whole quilt with Liberty, I'm all about texture also. I do like mixing Liberty with linen. So I do that a lot. Oh, this was my first quilt. And I love mixing it with denim. Um, I've seen a lot of people doing that now. I've been doing that over the last couple of years. Um, I love that stuff. And I'm finding new stuff. But right now, at this exact moment, I'm really liking just Liberty. Uh, the quilt top just has such a soft feeling to it. Like, it's so silky. I like it. So that's my, my thing at the moment I like. Uh, it'll be fun to see what Diane is doing. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I like trying out new fun stuff like that, so... <laughs> oh yeah, Beyonce! So, I, there's like a list of instrumentals in my phone, and they just kind of play uh, on, on like a random order when I go live, because I think it's better that there's like something in the background. I don't know. If you guys think the music's annoying too, let me know. I'm trying to figure out like what's the best thing to do for these lives. I don't know. But yeah, I thought the music was fun. <laughs> oh, I gotta scroll. Duh, do I do long arm quilting? So there is a long arm machine that I can use at Gotham Quilts. Oh, an unflattering angle, isn't it? <laughs> um, I don't use it that often. But uh, I was taught how to use it. Uh, yeah, I end up quilting my machines on my machine, uh, my own machine, mostly because of time. Um, I'm actually super, super, super busy all the time, which is crazy. I own my own small business, and in order to quilt for a living, you really have to hustle and do a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, so I work like more than I ever did. I used to work in business and, you know, like a full-time job. I really work a lot uh, on my own business. Um, it's funny, I'm not, I don't even have products yet for the business. Uh, most of it, it's funny how it's changed over time. When I started out, it was like, oh, I'm gonna make quilts for people, and we'll see. I thought I would do it on the side. And then that developed into like teaching lessons. Uh, when people found out that I quilted in New York here, where I live, uh, they got all excited and were like, ah, I wanna learn. So that's what I've been doing. I teach a, lot, teach a lot of intro quilting at Gotham Quilts. I think that's my most signed up for class. I'm really excited coming up though. Uh, if you ever come to New York City or if you are here, uh, all the projects in the book, hopefully, at least most of them, I want to turn into classes. Not just for like going to see guilds and doing workshops, but I want to teach them here. So wouldn't that be cool? Like, I don't know. I think it's going to be fun to be able to teach like projects from my book. This is all new to me. This is the first time I've written one. So I'm kind of like figuring out like all this stuff about it, um, you know, and whatnot. Uh, have a look at the Strawberry Thief. Oh, the Strawberry Thief! Yes! That's another one. I usually forget to mention them. Actually, the Strawberry Thief Liberty print is my absolute favorite Liberty print. Um, yeah, how are you guys doing? You know. Ask me any questions. Uh, oh, I saw questions. I gotta think back. I need to make a list of questions that I get. Like on, uh, like I see in comments and stuff. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, scrolling back down. I don't do classes in this room. I do my classes at the Gotham Quilts. It's a quilt shop here in New York City. Uh, they have a big area. Um, maybe if there was like a one-on-one -on -one lesson, my private lessons, uh, I would consider doing it here. A lot of people want to meet Diane, so I have done it before. But for the most part, I do it at Gotham Quilts. Um, I feel like I'd also need to know the person <laughs> a little bit to have them, you know, here instead of like in a store. You know, I mean, it's weird because I feel like in real life that would be the case. But for the most part, quilty people are usually awesome people. And so like, like this stuff, this is super personal to me, but like I enjoy sharing about it and everything. Um, that's the funny thing about Instagram. It's like, how much do you share you know, about yourself before it gets like weird or dangerous or, you know, um, like this stuff, for instance, the stuff in my, I really love this. First of all, I'd say this original scrap box, but being able to put all the stuff that I have on display, I do these lives and I talk about stuff and I find that I'm getting emotional sometimes. 
uh, about it. Like my first quilt, that's really personal to me. It's something I made when I was 12. Um, yeah, I don't know. See, I went on another rant. <laughs> Your morning coffee time is over. Oh, okay, bye. Thanks for tuning in or whatever you would call it. Um, have I overstayed my welcome yet? Sometimes I go on a bunch of rants or if I don't have much to talk about, I get kind of boring. So let me know. Uh, <laughs> or if you have any questions. So my sewing machine's out. I'm hoping to do some sewing later. Um, to be honest with you, that's one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm procrastinating doing sewing. Um, I didn't get much done, uh, sewing done earlier today. Diane needed pets. Um, so I'm rotating this because I'm like, oh, a good opportunity while I chat to show off the scrap box. I honestly believe not even just quilters, but if you're any type of crafter. Um, oh, another thing to be clear, I don't make any money if someone get, uh, buys a scrap box. That was a couple direct messages. I, I'm not in any way profiting. I'm just excited about my scrap box. You know, I, again, I don't think it needs to be said, but I get a lot of like, um, direct messages sometimes that I don't know. They're very like weird and accusatory. Um, I don't know. I'm yeah. Another like offside topic. I really like talking about fun stuff on this. Um, people love personal details. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I like sharing personal details. I was just like, I think that I was just talking, I would I watched like, I fast forwarded through and I saw in the last Instagram live I did that I said some really like, I don't know. It's cool I made my first quilt at 12 years old. You start sewing in the seventh grade, wow. So yeah, oh, so yeah, when I was 12, I must've been in the seventh grade. That makes sense. I remember, so I think about things when I'm young, I separate the years by where I lived. So I'm thinking I lived in Allenville, New York um, for the seventh grade for most of it. I started out in Chapel Field. It was a high school, excuse me, in Pine Bush, New York. And then partway through the seventh grade, I switched to, oh no, I was going to Pine Bush school and I switched, okay. Again, I went on a rant and I had switched to Ellenville at that point. So I was going to Ellenville. And this is New York. I'm sure no one even knows these towns and this is boring. Oh wow, I see Korean uh, Ooh. writing. So I don't read uh, hand, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I, I don't read Korean. I wish I did. I know people who do, and I'm insanely jealous. So I do watch Korean dramas while I sew, and I have to read the subtitles. And it kind of defeats the purpose of watching something while I sew. Like I watched Gilmore Girls. When I say watched, I really listen. Um, and like while I sew, cause you know, I'm here with Diane and it fills my time. But I, anyway, I started watching Korean dramas and I actually have to read the subtitles. So I'm constantly like find myself glancing at the subtitles to read them. And I'm like, this is very counterproductive for my sewing. Uh, how much starch should you use? Oh yeah, ask me questions. I love questions. Uh, your sister bought one of these. Oh, the scrap box, maybe? That's awesome, yeah. So someone else with experience uh, about it. I really love my scrap box. Okay, so these drawers are so jam packed with stuff. Uh, they're like overfilled. So sometimes when I pull out the really full ones, the shelf slides out a little because you can adjust them how you want. Um, yeah. They're not attached. So you can actually put like different drawers in different places. Like I actually didn't do it how they had suggested. Um, I had, there was room for another drawer up here on this side, a short drawer. If you see, these are like shoe bigger, a little bigger than shoebox size bins, but I put an extra drawer up here. So that meant there was one drawer less here. I'm actually gonna email the original scrap box and see if they'll send me an extra shelf and a drawer so I can fill in this extra space and add another one. Again, our side rant. How old am I? So right now I'm 31. I was born in 1987, you know. Um, how much starch should you use on fabric? Sorry, I started talking about it and I got distracted. So uh, it really depends. Like on Liberty, I tend to use a lot of starch. I use Niagara Men's Shirt Starts when I quilt with it. It helps it maintain its shape while I handle it as I cut it and sew with it. Because Liberty isn't meant for quilting on any level. It's meant for clothing and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it drapes like a shirt like this would. See, I noticed it. I was thinking out loud while I was touching my shirt while I was talking. It's like meant to, you know, contour to the body, not like quilting fabric. It's stiffer, um, has a stiffer feel to it, hand. Um, and so, but it's great for quilting. Um, but 
yeah. Anyway, so yeah, starching Liberty Lawn. I use Niagara. Um, I don't use Mary Ellen's Bus Press on Liberty. It doesn't make it stiff enough to really help. I use it on my collared shirts though when I iron them because it's not stiff, like Niagara Shirt Starch. So again, side brand. Um, yeah, and I don't find the other brands that are quilting are enough, um, you know, stiff enough. They don't make the fabric stiff enough. I really love Niagara Shirt Starch. It's like a dollar something at your, you know, your local grocery or drugstore. Here in New York City, there's lots of drugstores and bodegas. So I find myself saying, oh yeah, just, you know, walk to the corner bodega and buy your shirt starch. Um, but then I kind of caught on that most people, you know, bodegas are kind of a New York thing. And so, yeah, so drive is what I'm assuming most of you guys do. You drive to your local store. Uh, whereas I would just like walk to my corner when I need stuff like that. Uh, your first course of sewing was at 13 years old uh, on the first to county. Nice, a really famous designer here. I wasn't gonna try to pronounce it because I'm bad at that. Um, Carlotta Alfaro? I'm sure I butchered it. I'm sorry, no. Uh, yeah. Do I like batiks? Um, I did go through a batik phase. If you scroll back far enough in my Instagram profile, you'll find a lot of crazy things because I didn't show my quilting for a while. So it's just like me young, you know, in my 20s stuff. Um, but right before that, I made a couple of batik quilts. Like my East Village Vibrance one. Um, it's funny, in my cover for my book mock-ups, they've been put using that quilt in the photo. And it won't be in the book, um, but it's funny, I'm seeing that quilt a lot lately because that was in the cover options. Um, you did a good... Aw! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, I pronounced it right. Sweet. I tend to like, I like to say hi to people. Yeah. Say hi to me. Let me know um, where you're from. That's always, I like knowing like who's here so I can ask like questions and chat with you guys. Um, but yeah, so I do like batiks. I just haven't used them since then. I don't think I've made at least two batik quilts. I have lots of batiks. So these were actually in a, in a quilty box. Um, they were from Jackie Kunkel. Oh, for Island Batik. I'm gonna have a giveaway for from Island Batik um, in the fall. They actually sent me the fabric already, but um, I'm supposed to wait until Quilt Market when that line gets released, I guess. Um, yeah. Anyway, these were in the quilty box. So I have these, these are cute. These are blues um, from Island Batik. So yeah, you asked me about Batiks. I really love that about this box here. That if someone asks me a question, for the most part, <laughs> I can go in the box and find it. I remember the last one, uh, ooh, sorry, I'm dropping things. I should be careful. Uh, in the last one, uh, someone asked me about needles. And since I'm live, like I enjoy these, I don't get nervous, but it's funny, a lot of people in direct messages ask me like, oh, how do I confident on videos and stuff? I don't know, I'm really bad to give advice. I had full disclosure, I did do, uh, I hosted a news show when I was in college and I feel like that was practice. I don't know. I think that kind of probably helped with this. Um, uh, but that said, I think I go on these rants and I don't always have like a topic to choose and it's not always the best, but let me know if there's a way, something you like have a question about or anything. Oh, hi from Tennessee. Nice. Tennessee. So I've been fangirling over Kelly Clarkson lately. I really, I watched, the only season of American Idol I watched was the first one when she won. Um, but she's on like some show now. I don't watch any TV because I don't have time um, anymore. But I'll watch like clips online briefly when I'm procrastinating and I see that she's on The Voice and then she hosted some award show and she was just so cute. So yay for Kelly. Um, again, a random. Do I have graphic arts training? Oh yeah. So I, when I was a kid, um, I really leaned heavily on arts and crafts. So most of my training happened when I was super young, um, not in my adult life. Or well, I mean, I did go to the Fashion Institute of Technology. <laughs> Again, I'm saying things and then I'm like, wait, I should say this too. Um, but mostly when I was a kid, when it comes to actual crafts, um, rubber stamping classes, like paper crafting classes I've taken. I've taken lots of oil painting classes. I loved oil painting. Unfortunately, it's too messy. Um, for my little apartment now, but if I, or when, when I, you know, be positive, think positive, when I eventually get a bigger place, uh, I will start oil painting again. 
And if I lived, if I didn't live in Manhattan, uh, in New York City, I would totally also have a woodwork shop. Uh, my dad built pianos and Nickelodeons, and even though I only knew him when I was very young, uh, I was obsessed with it. And I had blocks, uh, pieces of wood left over from his workshop, and I really loved it so much. But in order to do woodworking, I mean, similar to quilting, look what I, all the stuff I have for quilting. But if I wanted to do woodworking, I'd have all this heavy machinery. I mean, I have a sewing machine. Uh, there's the Sizzix, and I do have a Cricut. But imagine being in an apartment in New York City with like woodworking machines, that'd be ridiculous. So if I ever decide to leave the city or get a bigger place in the city, I would also be doing all that. Um, and that was when, for the question about like, do I have training? Um, yeah, so I mean, growing up young around creative things, my mother wasn't creative at all. Um, my grandma, she was crafty. She knitted and crocheted mainly, but she also quilted. And she was the one who showed me uh, how to quilt the quilt. So I made the top myself without asking anyone. My first one at least. Uh, but she was the one who showed me how to hand quilt it. And there's actually hand quilting in it. But at 12 years old, I was like, oh no, this is too much for me. <laughs> and, oh, I'm gonna get some water. And you know, I stopped hand quilting it and it's, it's not finished. So 12, so a 19 year old quilt UFO. I'm sure some of you guys have me beat. Do you have me beat on that? What about UFOs? See, that's a question I would ask on an Instagram post. Um, I don't post as much as I used to because I'll say very briefly, accounts steal your photos and it's happening a lot lately. Big, um, I don't know if they're robots I hear or something. I don't really know much about the tech side of Instagram. Um, I'm here for the quilting, but uh, basically people are stealing my photos and posting them and then writing via Keaton quilts very low at the bottom of their little caption. Um, so they're not asking, they're not taking credit. And you know, I make a lot of sacrifices to do like my craft as my dream. Um, I, I live on very little sometimes. Um, and you know, it's really hurtful that I make all these sacrifices in my life and people are stealing my photos and my designs. Um, I'm not super wealthy. Uh, I was a foster child, you know, I didn't have like rich parents. Um, I was a foster child later in life, but I was an orphan um, in college, you know, and in life. So I've worked really hard for everything I have. And when people steal my, it's really, it makes me sad. So I won't talk about that anymore. I try to be positive, um, but yeah, sometimes like, you know, uh, with the Instagram community especially, there's some things that only you guys would understand that like talking to other people um, like in my life, they, don't, they wouldn't really get it as much, um, people stealing your photos, like how it would affect them. But especially when it's something creative. Um, again, I said I was done. So yeah, I'm gonna, that's been my spiel. I don't know what you guys think about that, but that's why I've been doing stuff like going live more lately because, you know, who's gonna steal my live video? Um, and it's a fun way to interact with you guys instead of posts that, you know, my, my, my photos that I spend all this time, uh, I spend all this money on a nice mm -hmm. camera in order to take better pictures of my quilts, you know? Uh, wow, this lighting is really bad. Um, my face doesn't look that great. <laughs> anyway, so like this camera, I spend a lot of money on this. Um, you know, to take good pictures. And when I spend all that effort and that time to take pictures and people, Take them. Anywho, I said that was the end of why I'm talking about that like three times and I continued. Did you like that? Um, but you don't have a watermark. I don't watermark my photos. Um, you know, that's a good option. I just find that it's like, it makes it weird. So I don't actually still feel like a business. I feel like a person. I don't have a business Instagram profile. Um, I am a business, um, but it's weird. Like. I, you know, I don't think of myself yet. Like this has all happened to me in the past two years that I've been doing this for a living and I love doing it, but you know, I don't know if I was, it's just kind of evolved as I've gone about it. And you know, I don't know. I'm learning, uh, I'm writing my first book, which is awesome. So I have all these awesome opportunities. Um, and I think it, it's thanks to Instagram, a lot of it. Um, like I've done stuff for the American Folk Art Museum. Uh, in October, I'm doing something for the National Quilting Museum. Um, I'm designing uh, one of their blocks of the month and I'm super excited. And I've been sitting on that for a while. I guess I'm allowed to say it. 
Um, but th I'm really excited about that. Mr. Domestic had done the first one. Um, he had sold kits. And see, that's another thing. He, is, he monetizes all his stuff he does, I see. Um, which is super smart. Um, I don't really, I'm, I'm writing a book, but that's pretty much the first thing that I've done, you know, through Instagram to, I feel like, take advantage of doing, like, promoting yourself on Instagram. Again, business spiel, you know, I'm learning. <laughs> I think that's a very interesting, uh, I find a lot of Instagram too is craftspeople trying to uh, monetize their craft. And I, I feel like I've done that. Um, in the beginning, it was through making and selling all my quilts, like quilts I made and sold. But uh, it's just evolved, you know, over time into all these fun things. Um, yeah, and I was talking about that because I was saying earlier, it's sad when people steal your posts. I don't know if it's happened to any of you guys. Uh, you love the American Folk Art Museum. Nice. Did you get to see the War and Peace exhibit? Uh, I got to do... Oh, that's another thing. Joanne Fabrics. I got to do a walkthrough when they were closed with the Joanne Fabrics CEO and all their business people. And it was such a blast being around these, you know, very creative, awesome, successful crafters, um, essentially. And yeah, anyway, American Folk Art Museum. I think they have a new installation coming up, actually. I don't know if it's sewing, but I always try to go whenever they put a new exhibit. <laughs> I love museums. That's another benefit of living in New York City is you have some really great museums. Um, you know, the classics like the Met and then the Museum of Natural History. You have the MoMA. I could go on and on. There's so many great museums here. And I take a lot of inspiration um, from that. Uh, when I was in college, I used to go to the Met all the time. It was my favorite place when I had to read a book or um, I had to study. A lot of times I'd just go to one of the rooms in the Met and I would sit and be in that awesome space while I studied for stuff. I wish I could do it more. Um, there's a pattern in my book that is English paper piecing. So I need to do some work on that. That's actually the last one I'm gonna work on um, just cause it's so time consuming, uh, write it, pattern writing wise. So that'll be fun once I get to work on that project cause I can take it out uh, in the, it's summertime here in New York. Um, <laughs> oh, let me see. Uh, so excited to catch. Oh, hi, Beansy Quilts. You're in Florida right now. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just we're jealous. I really want to go to Florida because I want a theme park vacation. I don't know if I'll have the money to do it in August, but I would love to go to like Disney World when I finish writing my book to celebrate. I've been putting a lot of hard work into this, and I think it would just be like a nice way to cap it off. Um, You've seen a lot of quilt and pattern fabric designers have their photos swiped like I described. Oh yeah, him too! Definitely! Um, Susie Quilts, I've seen a couple of her photos taken. Um, I don't know what's going on with Instagram right now. But yeah, I don't like to talk about negative things. Um, unless you guys want to. Uh, Lauren Higby, hi Lauren Higby! Wow, you're still- that's- my quilts are amazing. Thank you! I- I don't know, I, I put my heart and soul into them. And I find, especially now, I'm writing the book. And in writing the book, I don't know, it's kind of silly to think of it as pressure, but I feel like there's even more pressure on me right now while I write it uh, on the quilts in the book. And I love sharing them and it's really crazy to not to be able to share them. Uh, did you did you miss it? Oh no, P PK Boo. Uh, oh, my book coming out, it's not for a while. It's due to my publisher in August and it comes out in March. So we're dealing with like months and months away. Um, report them. So I started reporting these people who steal my pictures. Uh, unfortunately, I want to say five, ten times a day it happens, and it takes quite a while when you report someone to do it. Um, so I'm just trying not to focus on the negative, um, but it's really sad. And there are, I do see there's Instagrams uh, that have been putting in their stories. They've been linking to the people stealing photos, and. Yeah, so initially I was, you know, filing 10, 20 copyright takedown requests and all that, but it just got overwhelming. Um, yeah, <laughs> what else? But yeah, let's not talk about that anymore. Um, if you have any questions about my scrap box or sewing or Diane Keaton, uh, ask, ask away. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been going live a while now. I've been rambling on and on about different topics, um, the new stuff. So yeah, if you guys haven't seen stuff in a while, I'm gonna, I just got a Sizzix machine, so I'll share some stuff about that. Uh, I'm an Orpho artisan, so I'm gonna be sharing more uh, about Orpho. I'm also an Orpho ambassador. 
Um, I do love Alpha products. Imagine being a crafter and all your favorite companies uh, wanna like, you know, be a part of what you do. How cool is that? Like, I'm so unbelievably flattered by it. How old is Diane? So I don't actually know how old Diane Keaton is. Diane Keaton is a shelter dog. I got her when she was, they said about four, but I don't think they were right. Um, also, whenever I get asked if she's a breed, what breed she is, there should be an asterisk. Um, I don't exactly know because she's a shelter dog, uh, but I think she's a wire fox terror poodle mix. Um, but yeah, not 100% sure, unfortunately. When I got her, she was all matted, and whoever had her before me didn't take care of her. She didn't like people, which is crazy. It's hard to believe now with her $120 haircuts. And her endless hugs and kisses and her two hand pets that she demands, you know, that she was ever this super shy, matted little girl, you know. Right, sweetie? <laughs> so she wants to lay her head on my shoulder. Uh -huh. Hi, Diane. Oh, from Florida. So close to Disney. Ah! Oh my god, I need to read the comments because I forget sometimes. <laughs> I'm so jealous that you're close to Disney, Beansy Quilts. Um, oh, let me show you the quilt top. So Beansy Quilts is, whoop, Diane's shaking the camera. Um, is my friend here in New York and she is a long armor and since I'm so busy right now She's actually when she gets back. She's agreed to help me with one of my quilts uh, to long arm it And where is it? Let's see. Oh, I have in a drawer one of the drawers like work in progresses So it's this one. I actually made this quilt about 18 months ago, this was the first square burst and it never so there's no frame around it the difference between the one in the book um, and the uh, oh, you gotta go. Dinner's calling. Thanks. Bye, Lauren. Thanks for sticking with me for so long. Jeez, I feel like it's always fun chatting. I, I love when you guys chat, and thank you, Lauren. I always appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Um, but yeah, so this quilt top, I've shown it before, uh, but this was the first square burst. It's all Liberty Lawn apart from the center square, which is kind of small. I'd say about six by six inches. Um, so my friend Beansy Quilts is going to long arm it for me. So I'm excited to see what she does with it. Um, she actually has a long arming business. If you guys uh, ever need anything long armed, my friend Beansy Quilts, uh, that's her name on Instagram. Uh, it's at Beansy, B-E-A-N-S-Y underscore quilts. If you ever need long arming, she's great. But yeah, I'm excited to show you guys what she does with this. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited because uh, yeah I don't know again it's been in my drawer just as a UFO for uh, yeah about a year and a half so it'll be nice to be a quilt um, I'm gonna use wool batting um, the dream wool what is it yeah quilters dream wool batting I love the texture of it <laughs> Aw, oh, you feel the love. Aw, oh, love you, Beansy Quilts. She's a good friend. She also, it's her hand in that quilt photo of the finished book version of this a few posts back. Um, the newer one that I made when I was writing the pattern for the book. Um, that's her hand on the photo because <laughs> she helped me take pictures. She has a, a beautiful place in New York up high and the sky was there. Anyway, you know. Uh, my color palettes are yummy. Aw, oh, thank you so much. You remember my first post? Oh, so you've been with me a while. That's so cool. <coughs> Excuse me. I do a lot of talking on these. Wait, I'm gonna get a drink. Whew. Uh, yeah, you know. I had made it. It's really sentimental, the first one. My sister was in the hospital when I was working on this the first time, not that previous one. And I kind of made this when I was really kind of a little sad. You know, and I, rainbows made me happy. So I was working on this because I, you know, I wanted some cheering up. And every time I came home from the hospital and I would, you know, I'd work on this, it made me feel a little better because it's rainbows and it's happy. Um, so that's part of the story behind this. I don't know. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, yep, this is one that'll be in my book. It's a little different. So over time that I've made them, like this one, the square is inset and that was really hard. So I wanna wanna have people do that, have this all one piece. So there's slight changes that make it a little easier for people to do it. Um, just ways it makes more sense to go together. And then there's also a border around the edge, whereas this one doesn't have one here. How far back can I go? Oh, I've been on here an hour. I'm told I have 26 seconds left. Um, thanks for joining me guys. If you really want, let me know quickly and I'll come back live again or else I'm gonna head out for the night. 
Um, thanks for chatting. 17 seconds. So when you hit 60 minutes, they tell you, um, yeah, that you get kicked off. So 10 seconds. All right, good night, guys. Oh, hello, cute quilter. Uh, you love saving your, uh, all right, <laughs> bye. I buy myself at local quilt shops.